You guys are not gonna believe how easy it is to can chicken. About two, three weeks ago, we butchered all of our meat chickens. That was 153 meat chickens, which it takes our large family a lot of food in order to have enough meat for the entire year. But what happened was that uh, 153 meat chickens completely filled up our chicken freezer and is overflowing into the beef and pork freezer and the beef and pork are about to get butchered so i need the freezer space back which means i need to get some chickens out of the freezer and onto the pantry shelf by canning some chicken this is a lot of chicken i need to grab some of these get them in get them defrosted and get them cut apart into pieces so that I can can them. If you haven't canned meat before, you are gonna be absolutely amazed at how easy it is to can chicken. Now, in order to be able to do a canner full of chicken, I'm gonna to have to get quite a few of these guys out. I'm gonna expect that it's gonna take about six chickens to fill up a eight pint canner filled with chicken. You know, it's a little bit of an estimate because every single one of these chickens is a different size. Then I'm gonna cut them off the chicken carcass. I'm only gonna be dealing with the breasts today because I'm gonna save those thighs and legs for something else. And then I'm gonna be making broth out of the carcasses. You guys are not gonna believe how easy it is to can chicken. It is actually really incredibly simple. But let's talk about what we're gonna need in order to do this right now. We're going to need a pressure canner and no, your Instant Pot won't work. If you wanna know why, check out this video right here that I did just on that. So we're gonna need a modern pressure canner and we're gonna to wanna to fill it up right away to just about two inches full and turn it on low. We just wanna warm it up. We don't wanna bring it to a boil. We're also gonna to wanna to make sure that we have a canning rack at the bottom of our pressure canner to protect our jars from breaking from the movement of them boiling against the bottom of the pot. I have my jars all washed and ready to go. And I'm gonna actually settle those right on into the pot too to go ahead and keep them nice and warm. Even though we're gonna be doing raw chicken in the jars, we still wanna make sure the jars are nice and hot. If they start to tip over while they're in the pot, then it's okay to fill them with just a little bit of water to help stabilize them. The other things that we're going to need are our brand new lids and our rings for our jars. We're also going to want a jar lifter like this. This is so important when you're canning and some sort of a plastic tool or wooden tool to be able to help arrange the chicken into the jars to reduce the amount of air pocket space that you have in there. You're also gonna want a nice wide mouth funnel. Now today we're gonna to be canning in wide mouth pint jars. You can do chicken in quart size jars. I highly, highly recommend though that you use wide mouth if you can for something like a meat. It just makes it so much easier to get in and get out. You're also gonna want a kettle of water that we can start heating as we start packing our jars filled with the chicken. Now we're just chopping this into smallish type pieces. We're really talking about maybe inch squares. You can go a little bit bigger than that, especially if you're gonna shred it at the end when you bring it out, like you're gonna use it for tacos or enchiladas or something. They can be a little bit bigger. Today we're using boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You could do this exact same thing with the bone in. So if you wanted to take those drumsticks that you just got off that chicken and uh, put those into the jars, you could absolutely do that. Everything else is the same about this process. Now we have all the chicken cut. I'm gonna go ahead and go get my hands nicely washed and get ready to start packing these jars filled with meat.
my jars are nice and warm and ready to move on to the next step, which is to actually put the chicken inside the jars. Now, it's important to get a lot of chicken into each jar, and you're gonna be amazed at how much chicken will fit inside one jar. A solid two cups of chicken will fit inside a pint jar. We do have to remember though that we want to keep an inch and a quarter of head space for chicken. That just means that we wanna stop filling our jars with chicken when we get to where there's about an inch and just a quarter of empty space at the top of the jar. In my experience, it takes just a little over a pound of boneless raw chicken meat to fill a pint sized jar. One of the great things about chicken and canning chicken in this way is that as it cooks, it's going to pull all the juices out of the chicken and then the meat is actually going to cook in its own juices, which just really makes this super flavorful and absolutely delicious. It's also gonna be totally tender, like pull it apart with your fork type of tender. It's gonna be really good. Once you have all your jars filled, then you'll be ready to move on to the step, next step, which is to make sure that you have these jars really well packed. That's where this handy tool comes in play. You can just kind of push it down, make sure you don't have any open spots where you can add a little bit more chicken in there. Again, always maintaining that inch and a quarter of headspace. Traditional directions for canning raw chicken or raw packing chicken, as it's known, calls to not add any additional liquid so that when the chicken pulls its own liquid out, that's all the liquid that's in there. I find that if you do this, it will leave a portion of your chicken uncovered by liquid at the end of the canning, which isn't really a safety issue, but it's not very pretty either, to be honest. So I like to add just a little tiny bit of boiling water right over the top of my chicken before we get started. For a pint-sized jar, I'm only gonna add about a half inch of water into this. Now we're ready to add the salt. The salt is completely optional. If you want, you can leave it out of your meat. You could reduce the amount. It doesn't have anything to do with the preserving quality of the canning. So it's really up to you. It's really all about flavor. You could also replace the salt if you wanted with another dry seasoning. Just make sure it doesn't contain any gluten or any thickeners or anything that uh, can't be canned safely. For a pint jar, we're gonna put in a half teaspoon of a good quality salt, whatever you like to eat in your home. Now I have a few tablespoons of a really hot water in here. You could also use vinegar for this next step and you would not have to heat the vinegar, but you wanna take a very, very clean cloth, dip it into that hot water and wipe the rims of your jars. If any of the chicken ended up touching those rims, um, it could leave a little bit of grease on there and we really don't want that. That can reduce our sealing rate on this. So we just wanna make sure to get a great seal get all the grease off. If there's anything else, any salt grains or anything like that, get those off the rim. Make sure that rim is completely clean before you move on. Now we're gonna take our brand new lids. And by the way, if you're having a hard time finding lids, check out the Denali Canning Company. I'll put a link down in the description, but I've been using their lids this last season and they have worked really, really well. Plus they're a great small family owned business um, and I really like supporting that. And then we will put our rings on just finger tight. Don't crank these on too tight. You can have as many problems from rings that are too tight as you can from rings that are not tight enough. Can you believe how easy this is? This is so simple. All right, now we're gonna get these into the pressure canner. Just settle them right on in. As soon as we have all of our jars into the canner, we wanna go ahead and settle the lid right on and lock it down. Make sure the screws are snugged down really well or your lid is locked on really well depending on how your canner works. And make sure the lid is level so that you don't have any places that the steam can escape. 
double check that your heat is only on medium. We don't wanna bring the heat up too quickly, otherwise it can be hard to control the pressure. And wait until you start getting steam coming out of the vent. The canner has now come to a full vent, which means I'm gonna start my timer for about 10 minutes to um, let the canner push all the air out of there with the steaming process and just steam at full speed for that 10 minutes. The canner has been venting for 10 minutes now, so I'm ready to go ahead and put my weight on it. Now, all canning recipes, including this one, are written for sea level to 1,000 foot elevation. If you live above a thousand feet in elevation, you're gonna need to adjust the pressure that you use when you're pressure canning for your elevation. Here's a really simple chart on how to do that. For me, I live at about 2,500 feet, so I need to can at 15 pounds pressure. I'm just gonna pop that right onto the top. Now we're gonna wanna make sure that we let this canner rise slowly to full pressure. Remember, we don't wanna heat it really fast because if you do, you're going to get into a position where it'll get too hot and then you have to cool it down, then it'll get too cold and then you'll have to heat it back up. And that can get really old really quickly. But if you slowly bring it up to pressure, then you'll be able to stabilize it much more easily. When your canner's at full pressure, if you're using a weighted gauge or a jiggler, it's going to start rocking back and forth. That's gonna be your clue, your signal that you're at full pressure. You want to get that into a state where it rocks back and forth or jiggles about four times per minute. If you can't get it exactly at four times per minute, it's better to have it jiggle too often or be a little bit over pressure than it is to be under pressure or be jiggling too few times. While we're waiting for the pressure canner to come all the way up to full pressure, I really wanted to tell you guys about something exciting that is about to happen with Homesteading Family, and that is the Meals on Your Shelf Pressure Canning Challenge. In this challenge, we're going to be walking through the process of pressure canning full meals all together in a group. There are gonna be several hundred of us going through, learning together, sharing our successes, asking our questions, and all getting to support each other in this process. During the challenge, you're gonna put at least 21 jars of meals, complete meals on your shelf. These are meals that you're gonna be able to go to your shelf, pull them off, heat them up, and in five minutes have a complete meal on your table. You have 15 different meals to choose from in the challenge to get to can. Things like salsa verde chicken, meaty spaghetti sauce, a white chicken chili. You guys, these are amazing, delicious meals. Oh, don't forget the loaded baked potato soup and the chicken enchilada soup. These are amazing meals that your family's gonna absolutely love and you are going to fall in love with the process of pressure canning and having meals just waiting for you on the shelf for when you have a busy day and you just need a break and you still wanna get a good dinner on the table in five minutes or less. Hey, if you're interested in the pressure canning challenge, it's happening over in the Homestead Kitchen membership and will be starting right at the beginning of November. So make sure you click the link in the description below to get on the wait list so you can get more information about the challenge and the membership. We'll see you there. The canner is just coming up to pressure here and you can hear it jiggle. That was a long jiggle, but that counts as a jiggle. Remember, we're looking for that four jiggles per minute. So you hear how you have a cluster of jiggles and then you have a break? That's normal and that counts as a single jiggle. Right now, we're maybe just barely over pressure, but I'd rather be over pressure than under pressure. If you need to adjust the flame on your stove, please do it very, very slowly and as small increments as possible so that you don't end up really making your canner unstable. As soon as you get to full pressure and you're getting that four jiggles per minute, then you're ready to start your canning. Then it's time to start your timer for the processing time. 
If you're using pint jars, then you're going to want to start the timer for an hour, 15 minutes. If you're using quart jars of chicken, then do an hour and a half. Now make sure you keep an eye on your canner or an ear out for it to make sure it stays at full pressure the entire processing time. Once that timer goes off, just go ahead and turn your heat off and then we'll be letting that pressure come all the way back down before we do anything else to it. The canner is done processing. I turned it off and it has cooled all the way back down to zero. And now it's time to take the weighted gauge off. It is hot though, so make sure you don't grab it with your hand. Now we're gonna let that sit for five minutes while the pressure normalizes, then we'll be ready to take the lid off and get the jars out. That chicken already smells amazing coming out of the counter. It's really exciting. So now we're just gonna use our jar lifters and set them onto the counter onto a towel and we're going to make sure to space them out a little bit so they have lots of air space around them so they can cool down equally look at that it is still boiling inside that jar you can see it can you see how much amazing amazing looking chicken broth there is all the way around most of that just came out of the chicken meat itself and that chicken just cooked completely in its own juices. Isn't that exciting? It's really important to let these jars cool all the way down completely undisturbed. Don't touch them, don't move them, don't let any cold wind hit them. I even like to joke with my kids and tell them don't even look at them too hard. You need to let those seals get really stable and let everything cool down before you start to move them around. When they're in this state, those seals are still pretty fragile. Once they cool down all the way, those seals will be on there and it will take breaking your fingernails to get them off. We're gonna let these cool overnight or for 12 to 16 hours until they're completely cool, top, bottom, inside, everywhere. And then we're gonna come back and check on them and make sure they all sealed. Our jars of chicken have been cooling overnight. Take a look at that, you guys. They look so good. Now, okay, let's be real. Sometimes canned food doesn't look as great as the fresh version of it, but this is incredibly cooked chicken that is ready to sit on your shelf. After you have them completely cooled, you're gonna wanna go through and check and make sure all of their seals are good. You just do that by pushing down, making sure there's no movement. If you find one that has not sealed properly, pop it into the refrigerator and use it within the next few days. Then you're gonna wanna take the bands off of your well-sealed jars. This is really important. Don't store them with your bands on. If you have any greasy feel to the touch with uh, this jar, then go ahead and wash that off right now. You don't wanna put anything dirty away in your pantry. And then always, always, always label it with what's in there, chicken, and the year at the very least so that you can properly rotate it. Now this jar is sealed really well. You do not need those bands on there to hold those lids on. This is not going to fail. In fact, if you have canned your food properly, you're gonna really injure your fingernails to get the lid off. That's how well that lid is on there. This is now ready to sit on your shelf as long as the seal remains good, which is one year, two years, five years, maybe even 10 years. But remember, this is gonna be the most nutritious and delicious within the first year after canning. This is amazing. You guys want this. When you are ready to use it, all you're gonna do is pop it open and it is ready to eat or to put in tacos or anything else. And if you wanna learn more about putting entire meals on your shelf that are ready to just heat up and eat, make sure you click that link down in the description to get on the wait list for the Meals on Your Shelf canning challenge. We'll see you there.